All right, everybody, what's going on? This is Under the Arch Sports. I'm Eric Hobbs. Let's talk about the XFL playoff structure, how it relates to the Battle Hawks, and what they really should do instead of what they have right now. But first, you can guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and find us on Twitter. Right. So I need to note first that, yes, this is all going to be coming from a Battle Hawks perspective. That said, I'm going to be as objective as I possibly can. And I think there are objective reasons for everything I'm going to say. Um, this is largely for any non Battle Hawks fans who stumble across this video and, you know, just assume that I'm being some, you know, Homer clown, you know, sour grapes, whatever. Um, the other thing to note is, you know, with what the changes that I'd make, they it would have excluded Arlington. Well, they won the championship, so it might seem stupid for me to make this argument after the team that would have been left out won the thing, but it was a fluke. You're not going to convince me otherwise, so just understand that's my mindset about Arlington and how they won the championship. Now then, the system as it is right now in the XFL for the playoffs is that you, know, you have your eight teams, two divisions, and you have your North uh, champion, your South champion, and then the second place team in each division make the playoffs. First and second in each division play each other, those two teams to the championship game. So I don't like it. I don't think that you can just assume that the league has divisions that are of comparable skill level, especially in the first year. Uh, you know, th this this is all just kind of thrown together. All right, we had no idea who was going to be good when this thing started. Um, so when you do that, there's serious risks, and it played out that way. You had a four and six team make the playoffs. Instead of just the second place team in each division, what they need to do is have the two at large wild cards, just the two best records after your division winners. So it wouldn't have changed anything except Arlington would not have made the playoffs under my system. St. Louis would have. This is where, you know, the claims of Homerism may come in. So, yes, it would have benefited Battlehawks fans, absolutely. But what everybody would have gotten that's good is you wouldn't have had a, a sub-500 team in there to begin with, which you don't want that. I mean, all right, they uh, they won it this year. Do you really expect a team to go four and six, make the playoffs, and be a true contender every time it happens? No, more often than not. They're going to get housed against a team like D.C. That's what's more likely to happen. So instead, if you, you were to go with my system, the two best teams after your division winners, you're looking at D.C. and Houston as the division winners, Seattle and St. Louis, the next two teams, both at 7-3, and three, same record as Houston. So you would have a matchup of D.C. hosting the Battlehawks. The Battlehawks being the last team in, then play the top seed, that being D.C., having gone 9-1 in the regular season. Then you would have a matchup of Seattle at Houston. Seattle be, having, having the tiebreaker over St. Louis. They would have been the top wild card playing the second division winner. So that's what the matchups would have been. Now, I mentioned the skill level in the division being a factor here. You don't know the skill levels of these divisions, and they can change from year to year. This year, in my opinion, the three best teams in the XFL were all in the North Division. And the Battlehawks were just, you know, the third third best in the division, they got two spots. So I, there's only so much you, that the Battlehawks can do about that, right? Why do I say that? Well, I need, I don't think I need to go any further than looking at Houston's record, the South Division champion. 
they went seven and three, undefeated against the South, one and three against the North. They beat Vegas. And then those top three teams, the three teams I think are best, Houston lost to all three of them DC, Seattle, and St. Louis. So you have that dynamic where one division may be just overall stronger. And this can change. Look at the XFL. And the guys who succeed in this league are going to get looks at training camps in the NFL. So, yeah, AJ McCarron, Hakeem Butler, let's say they go in the NFL. Red Hawks offense is going to hurt. They're, get, they're going to need guys. You look at Seattle. What happens if two or three of their receivers get looks in the NFL? Two teams right there looking drastically different, right? Because of the NFL, just picking the best talent. Maybe that happens, and maybe next year the South is the dominant division, and the North gets two teams in, even though they don't deserve it. That can happen. And I think that's even more likely than in other, other leagues because the XFL is going to operate as a feeder league to the NFL. So I think they need to understand that. They just have the four best teams. Because isn't that the goal? Is to get the four best teams, regardless of where they're from? That's how I view it. Now, this league is new. And trying to get kind of a footing in the American sports culture, in the landscape. Well, how do you do that? Well, attractive matchups that are going to draw in TV ratings and sell tickets. XFL needs money to survive, right? So, having a four and six team in the playoffs, that's not attractive. That's not going to sell tickets. Even though Houston and Arlington, the South Division uh, semifinal, the de facto championship game uh, for the division, it's an in state rivalry, so forth. Not an attractive matchup. People aren't going to want to watch that because the expectation was that Houston would cruise. I know it didn't happen, but that's not the point. What matters is people being excited for the game to buy those tickets or to watch on TV. That's what the XFL needs is excitement beforehand. Well, having the four best teams is more likely to get you that and draw in more revenue for the league. And that's what's going to help this league survive and thrive. So I think that's important for them to consider going forward. You have you have a, a 500 or worse team in the playoffs. Everyone's expecting a blowout. And they won't pay attention. I know Arlington won, but it doesn't matter because it wasn't expected. It didn't draw ticket sales. It didn't draw TV Buys. So that's what I would do. I, I would just change it to be almost kind of like Major League Baseball, where you have your division winners and then the three best teams after that in each league make the playoffs. Same concept, two division winners, two best teams after that, regardless of division. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Should the XFL change it? Am I just being a total homer on this? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for checking us out. Keep it tuned here to Under the Air Sports for everything in the world of St. Louis sports. See you guys next time.